Hi everyone, this is Mrs. Bustamante. Today we're going to talk about section 1.1, which is the structure of water and hydrogen bonding. It's going to be important we focus on our learning objective, which is to explain how the properties of water result from its polarity and hydrogen bonding, and then some essential knowledge. Uh, what are the subcomponents of water and what are its properties? Why do living organisms or living systems depend on the properties of water? And uh, hydrogen bonds between water are responsible for things like cohesion, adhesion, and surface tension. That's really what we're going to talk about today. So you probably all know the structure of water or the formula of water is H2O. Most people just know that by now. But what do we need to know more specifically about that? Well, oxygen, when we look at our periodic table, is in the top right of our periodic table. It's up here. It means that it has a high electronegativity or it really wants electrons. Hydrogen, on the other hand, is in the top left. So it has a lower electronegativity and it's more willing to kind of give up its electrons or let other people have them. People, I mean elements. So because of this, that means electrons are not shared equally between uh, a water molecule itself, between that hydrogen and oxygen in that water molecule, even though they are sharing electrons in what we say are a covalent bond. So because they're not shared equally due to that change or difference in electronegativity, we say that water is a polar covalent bond or water forms polar covalent bonds. So what do we mean when we say that? Well, here is a water molecule right here. And the polar covalent bonds we say are intramolecular bonds, or they're within the water molecule itself. We draw them with a solid line, and that's where hydrogen you'll see has high, slightly positive because it's kind of saying, oxygen, go ahead and take my electrons. And oxygen is a little bit negative. You'll see this with our delta. That's how we show where it's slightly positive and slightly negative. And those are my polar covalent bonds within water itself. Now water, because it has this polarity, does something special. It forms hydrogen bonds with other water molecules as well. So here's another water molecule. And you'll notice that its oxygen is slightly negative, And it's going to form what we call a hydrogen bond with the hydrogen of a different water molecule. These are called intermolecular forces because they're between two different water molecules. So water molecules are attracted to each other and that attraction forms hydrogen bonds. And here's a picture of water and then if you wanna look at it on the molecular level, what that kinda of looks like. So why is water special? Because it really is. Well, its ability to form hydrogen bonds gives it some really unique properties that make it essential for life on Earth. Uh, cohesion and adhesion behavior, how it sticks together, how it can help moderate temperature, and how it can expand upon pre freezing. Also, sometimes you'll hear it called the universal solvent, and we'll talk about why we hear that. So sometimes you'll hear that water is sticky, and that's because water has cohesive and adhesive properties. Cohesive meaning um, between same, type, same type molecules, so water to water. Hydrogen bonding between water molecules causes them to stick together. This is what gives us surface tension. Uh, sometimes you can see small insects kind of standing, if you will, on the surface of a body of water. That's because of the surface tension in water. It's also why you can drink water up a straw because that water kind of sticks together and all moves up together. Adhesion is between different molecules. So hydrogen bonding between water molecules and other polar molecules. An example of this is the meniscus that you see on say a graduated cylinder or a beaker of some kind. It's that curved part, right? When we look at it, you see that the water's slightly higher on the sides than it is in the middle. That's because water is bonding to that glass or whatever that substance is uh, a little bit more, a little bit stickier than to itself. Adhesion is also kind of responsible for why plants can bring water up to their leaves from their roots, although there's some other uh, properties at play there later on. We'll talk about them. So water is really important for moderating temperature. It has what we say is a high specific heat, and specific heat is just the amount of energy needed to raise one gram of a substance by one degree Celsius. Water specific heat is actually one calorie per gram degree Celsius, which sounds kind of low, but it's actually really high. So what does that mean? It means it takes a lot of energy in order to change the temperature of water, or rather water will resist changes in temperature. 
So that's why when we look at places, um, here's the Oregon, Washington coast, right? Even across the same latitude, we notice the coast often has lower temperatures than say uh, central and eastern Oregon and Washington because this large body of water that those towns are right next to helps kind of moderate the temperature or keep it cool. Whereas you move further away from that body of water, you don't see that so much. Another example of this uh, is sweat and how it brings our body temperature down, right? Well, when we sweat, that's essentially like water on our skin. And when that evaporates, it's taking the energy or the heat from our body and causing that water to evaporate and helping to cool our body temperature down. So water can really moderate the temperature of something. Uh, solid water, we like to say, is kind of weird. Most substances, when they're solid, are actually uh, more dense than when they're a liquid. But water does not behave this way. If you've ever looked at a cup of ice, ice, you will notice, actually floats due to the hydrogen bonding. So we say ice, or solid water, is actually less dense than liquid water. And this is really an important piece because if it weren't less dense, we'd see uh, lakes and rivers and anything that might freeze in the winter, it'd freeze from the bottom up, which wouldn't be great for living organisms, right? They probably wouldn't survive. But because ice is less dense, it will kind of hang out on the top. And so organisms can survive below it in the liquid water still. Uh, so it allows them to live beneath it. Another really important thing is that it allows for seasonal turnover or cycling of the nutrients when in within certain areas as that cold water kind of sinks and the warm water rises you get a nice circulation in there something to note ice still has those hydrogen bonds that we talk about in liquid water uh, but they're just more fixed and they don't move around as freely Sometimes you'll hear that water is the universal solvent, and that's because water's polarity makes it an excellent solvent or something that dissolves solutes, something that dissolves something else, creating what we call a solution. Now, it's good to know that water won't actually dissolve everything, even though we sometimes hear it called universal solvent, but it dissolves a lot of things. Particularly, it's really good at dissolving polar or charged molecules. In other words, we would say molecules that we call hydrophilic or water-loving. These are other polar molecules. Lots of times you'll hear like dissolves like. That's because polar molecules will dissolve in other polar molecules. And nonpolar molecules will actually dissolve in nonpolar uh, solvents. So, for example, a hydrophobic molecule would be a polar repelling or a nonpolar molecule you would hear. Typically, fats and oils, we say, are hydrophobic. They don't want to mix with water. And if you ever think about um, if you're cooking and you try and combine water and vegetable oil or something, you'll see them separate. That's because of the polarity of the two of them is not the same. Uh, water's particularly good at dissolving salts, though. So NaCl is salt. And why is that? Well, salt is an ion compound. It has definite positives and negatives in it. And so that salt will break apart. It's also polar. Uh, so the positives and the negatives, the parts of water, will get attracted to parts of those molecules and kind of break it apart, if you will, which makes water really unique and that will dissolve a lot of things. So what are your takeaways? Make sure you understand the properties of water that result from its polarity and hydrogen bonding and the effects of biological functions because of that. Can you talk about the subcomponents of biological molecules and their sequence and determine the properties of that molecule? Can you talk about why living systems depend on the properties of water? Um, that result from the special bonding that happens in water? And can you talk about the results of cohesion, adhesion, and surface tension and why all those are important? Have a great evening.